If you're a young guy looking to just start his fragrance collection, his fragrance wardrobe, you absolutely have to watch this video and implement these tips before doing so. It'll save you a lot of headache. This is what I've learned ever since starting my own fragrance collection. What's up guys? This is The Centrepreneur here today with a new video. So you want to get into collecting fragrances. You've been online, you've seen a few reviews, you've probably seen Jeremy Fragrance, hell maybe even seen one of my videos. My name's Jeremy too, I'm just not as important as him. In, in YouTube land. So maybe you've seen a few videos and you want to start collecting. All the pretty bottles, all this, the smells and the compliments from girls. I remember when I started it was really exciting but at the same time I fell into a lot of traps, a lot of pitfalls, I wasted a lot of money, a lot of time, and just an overall headache. So I wanted to share with you my seven tips for starting a fragrance collection in 2019 to save you guys money, save you guys headaches and whatever. And I mean, can you implement these tips even if you're not starting a collection? Yeah, you can. Even if you've been at it for a while and you want to, you know, smarten up basically and get a more refined collection, a more quality collection, then these tips are for you. So my first tip I have for you when looking at fragrances to buy is to take your time, don't rush it and don't blind buy. So spend time with the scent basically. Unless it's like a super smoking deal on eBay that's never gonna come again, you will find that fragrance again. Like unless it's discontinued, unless it's you know a sale, whatever. It will be there tomorrow. So you can afford to take your time. This kind of goes hand in hand with if you've already got one good fragrance then you're already good enough basically. People don't care if you have a different scent for every day of the week, but they do care if you smell good. And if you've got like one of the, the super popular frag designer fragrances, you're going to be totally fine and you can definitely afford to take your time experimenting with new fragrances. And don't blind buy, just don't. It is a colossal waste of money on the whole. There are select few people with the money to burn and the love of the art of perfume that they can get away with blind buying and they can be totally okay. But that's like the outliers, the ones and two percents of the fragrance community. For the most part, most of us, when blind buying, we're going to end up with a couple bottles we really like and dozens of ones that we don't care about. And then you got a bunch just sitting on your shelf and collecting dust. And you might say, you know what, I can't get samples around me. I can't go to Sephora. I, can't, I don't have a department store. You can still order online and I would recommend blind buying samples over blind buying bottles because a bottle is a big commitment man, a hundred mils and you can give them away, you could resell them, sure, but it's going to be a bigger financial commitment than just buying little one mil samples or even decants, you know, three mils, five mils, whatever. It'll just make your life a lot simpler if you take your time with fragrances and avoid blind buying bottles. So my next tip kind of leads in from my first one and that is if it's just good but not great, don't bother with it. Now, I've got an example here I wanted to show you guys, but uh, basically what I mean is if you smell something and you say, oh, you know, that's nice, that's good, don't buy it, don't bother with it. Even if it's only like 20 or $30, like my example is, you're not gonna wear it, you're not gonna like it because there's this super important concept of owning more and smelling worse as you own more because you've got more bottles to choose from and some of them inevitably aren't gonna be the best, they're not gonna be your favorites, but you're still going to use them because meh, you got them now. And as a gym scent, maybe. As a casual scent, maybe. But at the end of the day, don't you want to love everything that you own? So if it's only good but not great, I wouldn't buy it. An example of this for me, Machino Womo. This is nothing special to my nose. I bought it because it was good. I wanted a cheap casual fragrance, or I thought I did, and I thought that this would do the trick. But uh, as it turns out, it does not because it just smells good. It smells nice, it's pleasant. For 30, 25, 30 dollars, it's hard to beat this, but I don't love it. So even when I wear it casually, I'm always thinking, uh, I could be wearing something else. It's just another bottle to make clutter in my collection when I could be reaching for something that I really love. And even though it's a little bit more expensive, how long does it take to run through a bottle? A long time. So. I love Prada Lome. This is a fantastic fragrance in my opinion. Uh, they're even kind of similar in the way that they both smell kind of freshy clean. Kind of similar, but Prada Lome, man, I could wear this 
pretty well every day of the week, and if I go out casually, I always reach for this one because I know it's my favorite pick in my collection. This one, almost never, because it's just good and I don't love it. Okay, tip number three is to take reviews and reviewers, including myself, with a grain of salt. So there's two parts that I want to kind of get into this. First off is that a reviewer is just telling you their experience. We're not telling you it's good for sure and you're going to love it. We're just telling you, in our opinion, we like it. Or in our opinion, this is how it smells, this is how long it lasts, whatever. This is how it is according to us. But that doesn't mean that you're going to like it. That doesn't mean that you're going to get the performance out of it. So whenever you're watching a reviewer, you need to take into consideration that although they may like it, I may not. And just because they say it's good, to their nose it's good, doesn't mean to my nose it's going to be good. Now an example I have of this is uh, Jazz Club. My favorite fragrance from Margiela. It's beautiful, it's awesome, I love it, I talk about it all the time, but not everybody likes it. To my nose, it's the best fragrance I've ever smelled. But to your nose, it might be dog shit. So who, who knows? You know what I mean? <laughs> knows. But the bottom line is, whenever you're listening to a reviewer, a review, you have to bear in mind that this is just one person's opinion. And now to the second part that I wanted to say about this, as far as taking it with a grain of salt, is that I don't think anybody outright lies on YouTube or on uh, online forums. But there's definitely some embellishment in videos, and y you know what I mean. Where maybe a fragrance just smells good, well, when you go on camera, it becomes extraordinary. It becomes excellent. It becomes the next hidden gem. There aren't that many hidden gems, but there seems to be a new one every week, as far as some people are concerned. There's a new masterpiece every week. There's a little bit of embellishment here, and if you watch videos for long enough, you'll, you'll understand what I mean. You know, this is a business for some guys, and it makes more sense to say, you know, when there's a good fragrance, to say that it's a great fragrance, or when there's a great fragrance, there's an excellent fragrance. And if, from what I've seen, most of the big guys don't do this, but there are definitely people in the community that embellish a little bit, and they, they'll, you know, blow it up a little bit. And if a fragrance, you know, lasts eight hours, oh, it's beast mode. Uh, they blow everything up, so you have to keep that in mind. Not only is this just one person's opinion, it's also a business for some people, and some people don't necessarily have the same level of integrity that others do, and they're going to embellish just a little bit. Okay, tip number four. This is uh, very low-key compared to the other ones, but before you start collecting, find a cool, dark place to store them. There's nothing worse than getting into fragrances and you know maybe you want to display them so you throw them all in front of the window and then they all go sour in a couple months you know that's that's no good I would highly encourage you before you start buying bottles or if you're gonna buy a ton of bottles right away find a spot don't put them in your bathroom don't put them in front of the window even don't really leave them on your desk preferably find a drawer a closet you can even buy a cooler or something else like that whatever you can get your hands on and you can afford to keep them in a dark cool space where the temperature doesn't really fluctuate that much because from what I understand this is the best way to keep them I keep mine in a closet and uh, it's just totally fine so tip number four is you need to find a good spot to store them before you start going crazy tip number five might not be too popular either but I would recommend to you don't use social media for fragrances and if you do don't take anything very seriously. So, I mean, you're watching social media right now, it's YouTube, but what I mean by this is don't get caught up in the constantly talking, constantly talking about fragrances, the pissing contest that is fragrance community, where people are like, oh, I've got this many bottles and I'm wearing this Roja Dove perfume today, and if you're a new collector, you don't even know what the hell a Roja Dove is. You only know that it's a $400 bottle and you think that person's insane, but they're going to look down on you because they spent so much money on their Roja Dove and you only spent 30 bucks on Machino Womo. Well, they're going to look down on you. And, uh, there's so much drama and BS that goes on online. I mean, if anybody were to ask me today, should I get on social media at all, I would recommend no, just for the sake of your mental health and comparing yourself to other people, but Fredcom in particular, because, you know, this, this is what my channel's about, and uh, there's so much of that pissing contest aspect. And are, can you meet some really beautiful people? Sure. Can you share your hobby with 
people, sure, but you're inevitably going to run into trolls, haters, these ritzy, ritzy dicky people who just have, think they have so much money because they've got like a bunch of Zerge Offs and Roger Doves and they're so fancy and uh, you smell awful. So there. <laughs> the dude who's wearing Aqua Di Gio still gets way more compliments than these guys. They still have a way more wearable fragrance. My, my basic bottom line here for this video is avoid social media and if you have to, if you really want to socialize, meet people, share your hobby, do not take it seriously. If you see somebody posting their collection with like 500 bottles, you can comment, say, okay, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. But don't let that seep into your head that you need to own that many to be cool. Don't let yourself become a slave to that validation. So if you insist on getting on fragrant social media, for the love of God, do not take it seriously. But I would recommend avoiding it in general. This next one's another doozy, but when you're getting into uh, collecting fragrances, for number six, you know, it's it's easy to get caught up in all these videos where we're having girls rate fragrances or getting, you know, people on the street to judge how this smells. It's easy to see these people and be like, whoa, I'd like to get compliments. Whoa, I'd like to get recognized for how good I smell. Well, there's actually a way easier way to do this. And my sixth tip is to never prioritize how you smell over how you look, how you're charismatic, your physique, your clothes, you know? Never ever prioritize your scent over that thing. And people are gonna say, oh, well, girls have better senses of smell than guys do, and that's true, but you're never gonna get more compliments with a fragrance than you are with like a really nice set of shoes or a really nice set of abs if you wanna put the work in. So never ever prioritize how you smell over that. And what do I mean? If you've got money left over from your paycheck, don't do the cheap easy thing and just buy Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultra Mail, you know? Go out and buy a nice pair of shoes or save up a little bit of money, buy a gym membership, whatever. These things are going to get you way more compliments. And this is part of what drives me nuts with most complimented videos. You know, we can make them and I can say, well, Jazz Club got me so many compliments. Prod alone was my top compliment of the last year. Neither of them come close to like my best shoes, my physique even certain pairs of jeans, man, or bracelets, you know, accessories. There are so many other things you can do to get more compliments than fragrances, to make yourself more attractive with girls. Like I said, start working out. You'll see noticeable results within a couple months, probably, that are going to make you way more attractive to women. You know, what are, what are fragrances supposed to do? Like a, a, a tiny, a tiny little increment more attractive, or maybe slightly more appealing in the office. It's like a cherry on a piece of cake. Nobody really cares about the cherry that much, but if it's there, people are gonna be like, oh, that's nice. So I think the average price of a designer fragrance would be about 70 or $80. And uh, this here is a pair of faux suede Chelsea boots from ASOS. They were $75, I think. And I've only had them for a few months, but they've gotten me way more compliments than even my top complimented Prada Loam has over this past, I don't know, however long I've had them, three months or so. What I'm trying to get at here is, guys, for $75, you can go out and you can buy Ultra Male, or you can buy Acqua de Gio Profumo, or you can buy a piece of footwear, a statement piece of footwear that actually looks decent. These are actually kind of comfortable for $75. That's a real surprise, but, you know, take your pick. <laughs> These are just as pretty as a bottle sitting on your shelf, and I know we, we see online compliments girls, uh, they will like a good set of shoes more than any, than any, any, any fragrance ever. And same goes for working out, man, if, you know, if it comes down to buying some quality supplements or a gym membership or developing charisma, you know, spending time going to things like Toastmasters, which is free, or going to conferences, reading books, making yourself smarter, making yourself more interesting, making yourself a better speaker. Never prioritize how you smell over these things if you're at all interested in attracting women or men going the other way as well. Because, you know, it's, it's like I just said, it's a cherry. It's a beautiful cherry on top that can make you that just that little extra prettier. But it doesn't turn you into a delicious piece of cake. The cake has to already be there for the cherry to be effective. So, 
work on your other stuff first. Work on your other stuff before really caring about fragrances. You know, if if you want, if you've already got your stuff together or you're getting your stuff together, you're on the right path and you want to smell good, power to you. But just bear in mind that it's not a magic pill. It's not even close. There is no such thing as going from zero to hero just because you smell good or because you smell okay. It is simply an add-on. So that was tip number six. And tip number seven, the most lighthearted of all, is to have fun and do not take the hobby seriously. So this kind of ties in with all of them. You know what I mean? There's so much that goes on in online fragrances. There's so much. And for the most part, it's all just a game, man. You know, at the end of the day, we're still living, we're still going about our daily lives, and this is just a hobby. It's just like playing a card game. It's just like playing a, a board game, whatever, or playing video games. It's a hobby. And it's not a big deal to be made a big deal of. You don't need to spend all of your time looking for the next big thing. You don't need to constantly be locked in the pissing contest with other people. Have fun with it. Go out when you have time. Go out for a half hour, an hour. Smell some stuff and let that be that. Play around with your samples in your free time. Enjoy it. Don't follow anybody's rules. Try not to get caught comparing yourself with other people. And just enjoy the hobby. You know, it's fun. It's kind of fun, you know, buying these pretty little bottles. They're all shiny and you open up your closet and what, what am I going to wear today? It's fun. It's light. It's easy. It's nice to smell different from day to day, but it is absolutely not a big deal that you need to be worried about, that you need to concern yourself about. And if it becomes that, I think you need to reassess your hobby and see, you know, am I running this hobby or is my hobby running me? If I have to look in my closet and spend 10 minutes every day trying to pick out a fragrance, my hobby is running me. I am not in command anymore. So take it slow, take it simple, take it easy. Try not to get caught up in all of the, the social media garbage, the pissing contest as I called it earlier. Do it for you, take it slow, and be calm. Have fun with it, man. It's not meant to be taken seriously like most things in life. So guys, comment down below. What do you think of my seven tips? That is it. That is it. This is what I would tell myself if I was restarting my fragrance collection or if I had amnesia and had to restart over. Are there any more tips you would add yourself? I mean, obviously there are basic ones like don't pay retail, but I feel like everybody adds that onto their list and I really wanted to go deep and just make collecting as smooth and simple for a beginner as possible. So that's what I came up with. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe down below, hit the thumbs up and the bell to get notified when I come up with new stuff. I really hope you enjoyed this video, took these tips to heart. Like I said, whether you're a beginner or you've been in the game for 20 years, if you do these things, it will make your collecting a lot more easy, a lot happier, and a lot more carefree. So I'll see you in the next video, guys. Have a great day.